Welcome to the Osagobo YouTube channel. My name is Sam. Back again on Sam Gale Talks. This time I'm joined by Portsmouth midfielder Andy Cannon. Andy, how are you? Yeah, I'm not bad. Thanks, mate. You? Yeah, brilliant. Um, just to get into the, the questions, starting off with uh, sort of your footballing influences. Who uh, brought you your interest in football and did you have a team that you supported? Um, yeah, as a kid, I always grew up um, supporting Man City. And my dad's a massive Man City fan, and um, he always got me into the football. And um, he used to take me to Main Road and stuff like that. So ever since then, yeah, brilliant. Uh, was there a particular player that you saw at Main Road that really stood out to you? Um, at the time, they don't have the player. They didn't have the players, which obviously they do now. Yeah, of course. But, uh, <laughs> I was there uh, watching. Um, you know when um, Sunji, I, Danny Chow, and yes, people yeah. like that were there. So. Uh, Sir Van Diston, he was at Portsmouth as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was there watching him as well. Oh, brilliant. So moving on to your time at Rochdale, obviously, in your youth career, um, what was the football and education like there? And was you always a midfielder or did you play in different positions? Um, yeah, through the um, all the youth team, I always played like um, midfield, like a little bit more forward in the midfield as like a number eight. And um when I went into the first team, um, about 18, 19, I was playing quite a lot of right back as well. So um, I've been in a bit of mixed both, but I prefer the midfield position. Yeah, of course. So you, you sort of really gradually moved through the ranks and then you made your debut on the 27th of September uh, yeah. in 2014, obviously at Leighton Orient. What was it like uh, coming on, obviously, for your debut? And how did you feel, obviously, coming onto the pitch? Um, yeah, it was a bit of a weird one. Um, at half time, I think uh, we were down to 10 men and uh, we were losing 2 1 as well. And uh, I didn't really expect it. I was on the bench, just happy being on the bench, you know, at 18, and then just so watching some of the players play. And then um, the manager at the time said, um, Listen, you're coming on. And then um, it was a right back spot that he wanted me to play as well. And um, we ended up going on to win 3 2 with 10 men from um, that position. So the debut could, for me couldn't have gone any better than which it did. So um, thankfully, I had uh, probably one of the best debuts I could have asked for. Yeah, fantastic. Um, you obviously, uh, a more significant game that sort of stands out in my mind is when you played Spurs uh, in the FA Cup, obviously a 2 2 draw. What was it like when you first found out you were playing Spurs? Um, yeah. Um, it was just good, you know, like we wanted one of the big Premier League teams because um, we were hard to get through to the fifth round. So we thought we deserved uh, one of the teams like that. And um, when we found out, we was, um, we was all buzzing about it. Um, but at the time, it was concentrating on the league. Um, I think we was down in the relegation spot at the time. But um, then when we got the chance to obviously play against them, we thought, uh, just let's take this opportunity and then um, prove like, what, what we could do against um, a top side. Of course, you... Um... You then obviously uh, got man of the match as well. Uh, what what were the emotions like after the game? Obviously, you'd drawn, you'd taken them to Wembley where they were playing at the time. Yeah. Um, at the time, yeah, it was just good. Like, obviously, I think that um, to the day was probably one of the highlights of my career so far. And um, it was just one of them days where everyone was just so happy. You know, after, um, I think we scored in the 93rd minute to equalise as well. And then we knew we were getting a replay at Wembley. Obviously, it would have been nice to win, but yeah. um, it was hard to obviously go and win against a team like that um, with some of the players that they had out and stuff like that. But um, yeah, everyone was just happy after the end of it, and uh, it was just a great day in all, to be fair. Brilliant. So, you obviously made 101 games uh, for Rochdale uh, through your career. Uh, did you envisage, uh, obviously, playing that many games when you were in the youth team? Or was it just, I'll take it game by game, and if I get the chance, I get the chance? <coughs> yeah, I, th I think it was a bit more than 101. When um, I did, when I worked it out properly, I don't think um, sometimes on, um, is it like Wikipedia or something, it do not put out um, some of the cup yeah, games, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, and the other ones. Because uh, when I worked it out, I was on, uh, I think I played like 130, I think, maybe for them. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, um, just going through when, obviously, as a youth team player, we was in the stands and we used to watch. And uh, we was obviously wanting to be that player on the pitch. And um, the season we were watching when I was a second-year scholar, um, Rochdale was in League Two at the time, and then we seen them get promoted that year. And then to find out that I got um, a professional contract offered as well, I thought, here it is, like, obviously, Brilliant. this is a chance to um, 
going to hopefully be able to do it. So to go and play over 100 games for the club, obviously, uh, was uh, very good for me. And uh, I enjoyed every minute. So now you, you, after played for Rochdale, you headed to the south coast to play for Portsmouth. Um, what attracted you to the club, obviously? Some people think that the club actually sells itself, really. Yeah, um, it's just everything about it. Like, obviously, people say it all the time, but um, just when you look at the fan base, when you go down to Fratton, because no. I've um, played there a couple of times uh, the years before that, and... Um, when you were in the atmosphere, I remember uh, one time coming off um, the pitch after and I was like, wow, it'd be good to play there week in, week out. I remember telling my dad that as well. I was like, it's good uh, uh, the atmosphere and everything. Um, yeah. And the, the club itself, like, obviously the history of it as well. And um, I just thought, when I heard it came around, I thought it's an no brainer really for me to um, obviously want yeah. to go. Definitely. Um, do you feel like you've settled into the club now? Obviously, you you moved from the north. That was a massive sort of change for yourself. Um, yeah, definitely. I've um, I've settled in now. Um, I'm really good friends with um, a few of the lads down there as well. You know what I mean? Outside mm-hmm. of the football as well. And um, yeah, I'm fully settled now, um, and I'm enjoying it um, a lot down there. Obviously, I live with one of the teammates as well, so that's good. Just a bit of company and stuff as well. Yeah, so yeah, of it's, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what what was it like? I one of the games that you've obviously played for Portsmouth was against your old club Rochdale. What was it like playing against old teammates? Yeah, it was um, it was a bit weird to be fair. I didn't really think anything of it because obviously you go into it um, every other game and you just get on with it. And yeah. it was it was a bit strange, like looking at the people you used to play with and then you're against them. And uh, yeah, it was a bit strange, but. Obviously, on my mind, it was just like, I need to win this game and get over and done with, um, and then that's it. And uh, thankfully, we did that. So, what what's your assessment of the 19 games you've obviously played for Portsmouth? I know this probably it probably may not be 19 games, but um, yeah. you obviously scored also um, against MK Dons uh, in February. That was obviously a massive milestone for yourself, getting your first goal. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I've enjoyed every minute. Um, obviously, playing, you just got to um, give 100% all the time and stuff like that um, for the team. And obviously, the club as it is, um, that's the least that you could do. And um, yeah, I think I've um, done well. And um, for me, scoring that goal against MK, um, I was, I've was i been playing a bit more in the attacking position. So yeah. for me to get um, that off my chest, um, to get a goal, obviously, I've been out for about three weeks just prior to that. And uh, to come back on the first um, game back after the three-week injury, within about four minutes, I think it was, to score. Wow. I was happy uh, they went in and then it was a good feeling. It was a great feeling. Could you explain what it's like to come out of Fratton Park? Obviously, you touched upon the fan base. It must be immense. It's like a Premier, a Premier League fan base uh, in League One. Yeah, um, yeah, it's crazy. Um, it's good, just like um, before the game, you're in the tunnel and then as soon as you hear the music and then you walk out, um, it's just a great feeling every time you walk out. The fans are always there, um, the atmosphere is always class and um, it's a pleasure to just play there, to be honest. And I um, can't really touch up on it too much, but um, a lot of people and um, big name people as well have um, been to the ground and they've all said the same thing about it, so that speaks for itself, I think. Yeah, of course. Obviously, I've spoken to a couple of fans as well. Obviously, I'm I'm not a Portsmouth fan, but I know many Portsmouth fans, and they 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 think uh, very very well of you as well. They they they, they think you uh, you run run hundred percent of the time, and which is which yeah. is always good news. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, like I said, hundred uh, percent all the time. That's the least you can give, and then hopefully your talents um, can um, add on to that as well, and then you can impress them, and then just keep on improving all the time. Uh, into uh, current matters. Obviously, you say you live with one of your teammates. What uh, has it been like for yourself and your family during isolation? Obviously, it's quite difficult. Um, yeah, I'm back up north now. Um, obviously, um, I got tested positive, so I did two weeks isolation um, on my own down south. So that was tough, obviously, not being able to get out and stuff like that. Definitely. But um, I've come back up north to be with my family and that. And it's just nice to be spending time with them every day. Um, and it's just good, like, um, you're appreciating the little things which um, some people took for granted and stuff. And it's just good to be back home, to be honest. Um, but 
Um, it's a bit strange feeling knowing that you should be in the season because we want to get the season finished yeah. off as well. So um, it's a bit of a strange one. Um, obviously, I don't think anyone's ever um, seen anything like this before, what's happening right now, but hopefully it's um, all coming better soon. What What's the uh, maintaining your fitness like? Obviously, it must be crazy obviously with the unpredictability of whether the season will actually even come back yeah um it's tough obviously after a few weeks um you start uh how was it like today for example and um i did i was on the field and i was doing um fitness on that and this i think it's just more of like a mental battle now knowing that you've yeah. just got to keep on ticking yourself forward and making sure that you're right for if the season gets called back on and you just got to keep on thinking at the moment why you're doing this and keep on pushing yourself and don't have a slack off if you want a day off. Um, just make sure you get up and do something, even though, um, like I said, it's just a mental battle right now after a few weeks without um, really a football or anything. You just want to get back into it. So um, I'm keeping myself positive and there's a lot of things that I'm doing outside it, um, you know, just reading up on stuff and things like that to keep um, you motivated and watching things. So... Um, that's how I've been keeping myself taking over. Obviously, you say you're up uh, up, up north now. Uh, what's the communication been like with your teammates? Yeah, it's good. Um, we've got um, an app application um, an application called Strava, which everyone has to send the fitness on, you know, to make sure they're still doing yeah. all of it and keep on taking over. So, yeah, <laughs> you can't really get away with anything like that, to be yeah. honest. So. Um, yeah, that's that. And then uh, we've got um, all the lads are in a group chat together as well. So uh, most days uh, things are getting spoken to on about that and stuff like that. So everyone's been communicating still. And then obviously um, your friends who you say you're a bit closer to, like when you, you got some of your good mates there, uh, um, just messaging them individually as well and FaceTiming and stuff like that. So um, we're still all in contact a lot. Brilliant. Who, who are your closest friends in football? Obviously... Um... We, we've seen uh, a friendship sort of struck up between you and Ronan Curtis while at Portsmouth. Yeah, um, yeah, Ronan's one of my good mates down there. <laughs> um, he settled me in so well, you know, when I first moved down because it's hard moving. You know, as a, a young lad moving down um, south, you know, so far away from home at first. And then yeah. um, he was the one who just came up to me and he just um, speaking to me, making me feel settled, saying if you ever need anything like... Um, just let me know and stuff like that so right away i just felt a lot of respect for that um you know just coming over and then just saying anything like that and then uh since then we've just uh built up on um the relationship of a uh, friendship and but like i said i've got a few other good mates in football as well who i'm good um mates with and one of them's jamie allen for coventry who i was with at rochdale um for a good few years through the youth team and stuff like that and um i've got another one called zach clough as well Yes, yes. He's not been Forest at the time, um, right now. So yeah, um, them two are my close mates. But I've got um, a lot of other good mates as well, like Joe Rafferty for Preston, Harrison the guy for Scunthorpe, who I'm always in contact with still. So no. probably a few, many, too many to say really, but they're no. good people. Um, who who's the teammate you actually live with? Is it is it Ronan Curtis? Oh no, it's Tom Naylor, the captain. Oh brilliant! Uh, there, yeah. yeah, we're both Northern lads. Um, he um, lives up the Derbyshire way, um, so we um, we both just we're living down there on our own. So we just thought yeah, it'd be a good idea to um, just move in together, a bit of company, and um, it's just good to be honest. It's uh, worked out well. Brilliant. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Obviously, we'd we'd hope to see you back uh, in a Portsmouth shirt uh, soon in that promotion push. Yeah. Um, oh, mate, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Obviously, if you enjoyed the video, please uh, like it. Please subscribe to the channel. Please follow uh, Andy on Twitter. Obviously, a great guy. Has a great uh, story. Please um, please uh, show your appreciation for, for Sam Gale Talks. And we will see you in the next video.